Hey y'all, welcome to Clackbait. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the highly anticipated Mammoth 75 by Wuche Studios. Now, if you're not familiar with Wuche Studios, they are the makers behind the Icky 68 Aurora, which was extremely popular in the budget category, 65% keyboards. And now they're coming with a very premium 75% keyboard for us to look at today. Now I was lucky enough to get this on the first come first serve sale. And now the group buy has started in the United States. Canon Keys is the vendor. I'll have the link down below and I'll go over everything I can in this video to see if you should spend your money on this group buy or not. So there's a lot to unpack here. So sit back, relax, and let's watch the complete video. We'll do an unboxing. I'll give you a quick tutorial on the build. We'll do a hyperlapse. I have a pretty awesome B-roll for you guys to watch. So let's go. First thing, you're gonna get two sets of gaskets for this keyboard. You're really only gonna use one for the preferred method of the build, but I'll go over that in just a second. So here's a bag full of parts, which include the white feet that go at the bottom of the case. And then you have this encoder holder to make sure that the encoder isn't loose in there. So this is a very important part. You don't wanna lose this. An Allen key for the encoder. This is a special Allen key that's pretty small, so don't lose that either. Also some sticker pads, just in case the encoder is loose as well and these standoffs for the PCB, which I'll go over in just a second. And this is a little pad that goes on top of the daughter board. So there's two options for the group by a wired and a wireless. If you get the wired version, you're gonna need to use this for the battery bay. And of course we get the PE foam for those who love the PE foam sound, it's included. And here's the plate. The group by is actually gonna have different options available as add-ons, but this one's gonna be polycarbonate, extremely flexible. You'll see that there's a lot of flex cuts on here. So this should be a fairly soft typing experience with the polycarbonate and the flex cuts. But one thing that's pretty interesting, you'll notice that the pour on foam is actually installed on here. Now it is going to be removable, but the way that this actually mounts to the keyboard is almost like a stack mount. So I highly recommend you leave this on. And here's the PCB. Now Wuche Studio is known to give quite a bit of support on their PCBs, even if it's hot swap. Now this one does support split space bars, which is pretty interesting. Left and right shift splits, backspace splits, and step caps lock, which is pretty cool. And the back actually has the Proon foam also installed on the back. And then we have the daughter board, which is glued in. It's not removable, so don't try it. As soon as you do, you will bust your PCB. I'm not sure why Wuche Studios did this, but I hope they fix that in the group buy. As you can see, the flex cuts on this PCB are pretty nice. It's pretty standard in what you're getting nowadays. And this is a 1.2 millimeter PCB, so it is fairly thin. Now back to this pour on foam that's installed on the PCB. As you can see, you can remove this, and that is an option if you plan to build it the second way, which I will kind of show in just a little bit. Uh, we're gonna stick with the recommended build method for this video, but I will come back with another video showing how that's done. But this is where it kind of sits at the bottom of the case and acts as kind of a stack mount. Since this is a 1.2 millimeter PCB, I went with the Buche Studio stabilizers because they're compatible but you can use any stabilizers, but you might have to use the shims. Now included are two rotary knobs. One's gonna be an aluminum with some knurling on the side. This one is quite a bit lighter. Uh, it doesn't really have a lot of heft to it, and it has more of a matte finish to it. And here's the brass knob. This one looks nice, it's shiny, it has a nice chamfered edge to it on the top, and it looks premium. Now here is the magnetic holder for these rotary knobs. This actually screws in onto the encoder knob itself. I'm gonna go with this brass knob for this build. And for the group buys, they will have a different design. So look at the website to see what you're gonna get. Now as for these standoffs, it's pretty interesting what Wuche Studio has done. They've actually included some plastic screws that screw into these. Um, I found it to be pretty interesting. All you gotta do is just insert the standoff into the PCB and you're gonna screw it from the back with these plastic screws, which can strip pretty easy. I'm not gonna use them. Now here's the start of the show. And let me tell you, this case is absolutely breathtaking. I think Wuche Studios did a phenomenal job at designing the 75% keyboard. It is slightly larger than your typical 75, and I'll go over that in just a second. But as you can see here, the side profile looks really nice with this little angle on it. It reflects the light differently. And I love the way the weight spills over to the side. And speaking of weight, this aluminum PVD mirror finish is spectacular. This is one of the nicest looking bottoms I've seen. And I love the Mammoth logo on the back. It kind of has like a diamond polygonal shape going for it, so I love it. Now the typing angle is 6.5 degrees, which is very comfortable, especially with the 20 millimeter front height. 
Here's some stats real quick for you stat lovers, but it's pretty easy to use without a wrist rest. Didn't have any problems. So in order to keep that beautiful mirror finish on the bottom uninterrupted, they went with internal screws for this, which has caused a little bit of controversy with some of the earlier streams that happened. So I'll go over that in just a second. But before I get started, make sure you check out the build guide before you start building this keyboard, just so you have a good idea of what you're doing. Now, quick look at the top case. Here are those internal screws that we discussed earlier, and it has grooves for the gaskets on the inside. I got the E white and the E coating is actually pretty nice on here. Feels good. And here's the bottom case. Notice that it has grooves for the gaskets, but we're not going to do that since we're doing the recommended build by Wuche Studios, which is without the bottom gaskets. Now, since the hyperlapse goes pretty fast in the video, I just want to take the time to show you a couple of quick things on the build. Here's those pads I showed you earlier. They simply go here, one over the weight, and the other one, once you install the daughter board, just like this, you're gonna go ahead and place the pad over it. And once again, notice I have no gaskets installed on the bottom case. This is the recommended build by Wuche Studio. And once you get your daughter board wire all fixed, you're gonna place the full assembly on top and you're gonna notice that the actual plate foam is sitting on top where the gaskets usually go and the foam that's on the bottom of the PCB acts as a stack mount. So it kind of keeps everything in place and that's the way Wuche intended this to be, but there is a second option as well with the build. Now, once again, if you do decide to purchase this keyboard, I highly recommend using the build guide just so you don't run into any issues. Now, option number two is where you install the gaskets on the bottom of the case. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I will do a second video to show you how that works. But what you'll do is simply just take the gaskets off, place them in here in the little grooves that they already have ready to go. You can take off the PCB foam that's at the bottom. I would probably recommend putting some polyfill or something in the case, just so you don't get shorted and you're good to go. The switches we're gonna be using today are these SP Star Soda Series sold by the Keydot Company. I really love these switches. They're nice and smooth, they're poppy, and I think you guys will really like these. I have a link down below if you're interested. But enough talk, let's see how this keyboard sounds. Let's see how it feels. Let's start the build. Now that's the Mammoth 75. So what are my final thoughts of this keyboard? Here's some pros and cons. Cons first, now I don't like the way Wuche Studio implemented the daughter board and the JST cable. Being that they're connected and you can't really separate them kind of hurts a little bit with the build, especially if you wanna take everything apart, then you have to uninstall the full daughter board to take the assembly out. That's pretty inconvenient. I'd like to see them change that for the group buy. Now the second con I'm gonna mention is really for the first come first serve buyers. It's gonna be that screw that's underneath the space bar. Now they didn't do a good job of cutting the plate to size and it does not fit very well as you can see here. It causes some interference so you really have to kind of finick with it in order to get it in. Some people have actually clipped their plate to make it work. I didn't do that. I just ended up not even using the screw at all. Don't have any problems really but that is the inconvenience. But I have confirmed with Wuche Studios that they will fix that for the group by units. They're actually gonna move the screw placement altogether. And also one thing to kind of keep in note, this is a 75% keyboard, but it's a little bit wider than your typical 75% keyboard because of the way it has a navigation cluster on the side, along with the rotary encoder knob. It makes it a little bit wider, slightly shorter than a TKL, but a little bit wider than the average 75% keyboard. So keep that in mind. 
And one thing for sure I can give major props to Wuche Studios on is their transparency with their customers. Whenever there's a problem, they're really upfront about letting people know exactly what the problems are and how they're gonna go about fixing them. So major props to them on that. Now onto the pros, and there's a lot of pros with this keyboard. I absolutely love the way this keyboard looks. I think they really nailed it. I really like the layout as well for the 75 with the navigation cluster on the side and the exploded arrows. It really works well for me. And then the rotary encoder knob is really symmetrical right on top of the navigation cluster. So I like the way this keyboard looks. As far as the typing feel is concerned, it actually has a really nice, soft, bouncy typing experience. I wouldn't say it's the most flexy board. In fact, it's not the most flexy board that I have, but I really like the way this works. It's not necessary that a keyboard has to have a ton of flex for it to be amazing. In fact, some people like a stiffer keyboard in general. I haven't tried the second option for mounting this, so that may actually give a little bit more flex, and I am gonna try it without the PE foam, just to see what that sounds like. Now, as far as the rotary knob is concerned, I think it has a really nice step feel to it as you're turning it and the button press on it is really nice. Some people may not like the way it looks. They may feel it's a little too big and that's completely subjective and up to you on what you think looks good and what you don't. I personally really dig the way it looks. It's a standout feature on the board. Now, overall, I really like the dimensions of the keyboard itself. Like I said, it's a very comfortable typing experience with a 20 millimeter front height and a 6.5 degree typing angle. You really don't need a wrist rest to make this work. Uh, I normally do use a wrist rest. I found that I don't have to use one with this, just like the Frog TKL. So that's a big plus for me. Now on to the million dollar question. Should you spend your hard earned money on this keyboard? Now it starts at $359 for the basic aluminum bottom, and you can go all the way up to a whopping 719 US dollars for the mirror brass bottom. So that's a lot of money. So if you really like the way this keyboard looks, I say go for it. I think if you're looking for something at the entry price point of 359, it's a little bit more affordable. And if you really like the mirror finish on the bottom, which I absolutely love, I say go for that. The brass is really expensive, but I'm sure it adds a nice weight to the keyboard as well. So overall, I really recommend this keyboard. I have a typing test here at the end. So give that a listen. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I'll have another video that comes out with a different configuration. And like I said, I do have a affiliate link down below with Canon keys. So please use that if you found this video to be useful. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps my channel out a little bit. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. Hit the like button and subscribe if you dig the content. Peace.